So, um, today I wanted to present work that we are doing here at Nokia. Um, I'm part of the machine learning team. Um, many people don't know this, but Nokia is actually um, building Nokia Max here in Berlin with about 600 people. Um, our team, it's me, Hannes, Steffen, Mark, Felix, Ross, and Peter. We all have machine learning as, uh, say, a common theme in terms of our backgrounds. Um, I, I think with this talk, I have two goals. I want to, first of all, show you an algorithm that is, that is hopefully interesting. Efficient A-B testing is not classical A-B testing. And um, the other goal is I want to just uh, raise awareness uh, for Nokia. Maybe you've also seen that uh, we're a gold sponsor of this conference. We, we use a lot of uh, Apache software. And um, um, in this part of this case study, you're going to see how. So the specific um, thing we're trying to do is we have um, you know, Nokia maps running on Nokia phones. Pretty much like Google Maps, but much better, of course. So one of the things is it, it um, has an offline mode. Um, it's um, covering um, all of the world and is customized in 180 languages. Um, we have huge amounts of data, you know, backend services that feed 50, 60 million places of interests worldwide. We have, of course, address data worldwide that we need to uh, make searchable. We have built a, a new feature called uh, Places Nearby, and the promise is that, you, that it helps you discover places you will love anywhere, right? And uh, you see this feature here. Um, it's actually centrally accessible through a button, and it just tells you what's good around me. And um, here's an example output. You can switch this to a list view. For example, this would be here a list of recommended restaurants. If you click, if you click on one of those, List entries here, it just, I'm already here. If you click on one of those list entries, you actually get detail, details about the place, and um, you can ju uh, basically judge if this is interesting to you for, or not, or if you want to uh, see alternatives. If it's interesting, maybe you want to save it as a favorite, you want to call the place, make reservations, maybe you want to navigate to it. So this is kind of the, the basic uh, feature we're talking about in this case study today. And the question now is, of course, which places to show, right? I mean, there are millions of things that you can think of what users might find interesting. Maybe you want to show them specific categories or mixes of categories, restaurants, hotels, shopping places, going out places. Well, once you've decided that, so how do you rank them? I mean. Do you, do you rank them, for example, by, by rating information? Do you, um, how much, you know, do, is this distance effect, a factor? Is it enough if they're just in walking distance? Or, you know, are you assuming they're lazy? Uh, users who always want the, the closest, no matter what. Um, there's so many signals that you could combine, of course. So this is kind of the standard relevance optimization retrieval problem. So how do we go about it? Well. We thought, or actually, if you skim the literature, it turns out that a good way to, to do um, um, uh, relevance optimization is, is to try and do A-B testing. Now, it turns out that actually for um, you know, optimizing the relevance of those result lists, classical A-B testing is not the right thing. Classical A-B testing looks like this. Maybe you know this. You split the uh, population, which you see here on the top, in two groups, A and B, and you give them version A. Here in this example, you know, it's, it's classical web A-B test, and you give them a specific web layout, and you see what users do with that. For example, maybe you have a sign-up process, and you have an alternative version B, and you observe what this user population is doing, and you just compare, for example, the number of sign-ups, and you declare a winner, whoever, you know, whichever web layout um, results in the larger number of signups, right? This is classical um, A-B testing. Well, if you translated this one-to-one -one for our uh, case study, you could also think of a population split and you just have these versions and, you know, just for the uh, sake of illustration, let's assume we want to test 
best of eat and drink places versus best of hotels, right? And um, then we can say, you know, whatever results in the highest levels of user engagement, for example, the number of actions performed on places like call, save to, drive to, is the winner. Now, it turns out there's a better approach uh, to do this. Actually, um, Joachim, Sosen Joachims and uh, others showed in a paper in 2008 um, that this classical A-B testing, at least for um, result list optimization, is not a good thing to do. Um, it converges, the tests converge slowly and often actually don't even reflect the actual rel relevance behind it. So this is just an established um, finding, you can say, uh, state of the art. And um, it turns out there's another way to do this, a B test for rank result is called rank interleaving, which they propose in this paper. And um, one of the nice features about it is that it converges as fast as you get statistical significance with a lot less data. And a lot of this talk now is about the details of how we implemented a B rank interleaving in our, you know, solar Hadoop, um, zookeeper type of setup. So what you do in rank interleaving is this. You have your versions A and B, and the rough idea is, instead of feeding them to uh, you know, populations with separate users, you actually synthesize a new list, which combines and creates individual A, B tests in one synthesized list. You see this here. Starts with a restaurant recommendation, followed by a hotel, followed by a restaurant, so, and so forth, right? You build these pairs and you feed actually users a list of A-B tests, you can, so to say. And here are the details. What you do is you do a randomized mixing of lists and um, the interleaved list is filled with pairs of results, one item from each version. You do a coin toss, hopefully with a fair coin, to make sure um, each version has the same chance of being first, right? Because you have position bias, people tend to click, on what's on the top, you want to get rid of the bias, right? You do randomization. So how does this work? Well, let's say um, I do a first uh, coin toss, and um, here it's heads. That means version A gets to fill the first slot here. I choose the first entry of version A, alpha, and it becomes a ranked one result on the synthesized list. From version B, I just take the first of their uh, of, of that result list and put it beneath. I've defined the first pair in that list. Well, now you see that there's actually beta in version B is also occurring as a result in version A, right? As you compose the list, of course, you do not want to introduce duplicates. So you remove beta from both lists since you've already listed it. You toss the coin again. Again, we are getting heads and I'm repeating the same scheme. I'm pulling gamma from version A and pulling kappa from version B. And here's another iteration. Toyn cost this time tails. So now version B gets to populate that first rank in the next result pair. Rank five in the synthesized list, tau from B and delta from A. Now we have actually a leftover item well, you also list that as part of the synthesized result list, but you don't count it in the A-B test evaluation. This is the final list that you show to the user, right? So, and, and this is what we actually do. So we, um, this is how it's implemented, and this is what we actually expose to our users. So once you have that, how can you declare a winner? Well. You do statistical significance tests, and the input to the tests um, are the number of clicks on version A, the number of clicks on version B. So I mean, for, for extracting those, you do log processing, and we have our you know, stack of search analytics, Hadoop scripts that, that help us there. Um, there's a statistical test, the G-test, which is an improved version of uh, Pearson's chi-square test, and um, here um, a level of about 6.6 .6 of G corresponds to 99% confidence. 
So um, the null hypothesis that you're trying to reject is frequency of counts is equally distributed over both versions, and then basically you just plug in your counts into that formula here, and uh, you get a value for G, and then you can basically say which of the two versions wins. Very simple. How do we actually manage multiple versions? Well, this is a, just a rough diagram of our uh, search architecture. Uh, it's a distributed architecture. So we're trying to uh, show here. Actually, Simon uh, Vinn, our conference organizer, was an active part in, in developing the distribution behind this. You see that we have solar as a, a core component, and we have um, you know, a bunch of servlets that um, that actually um, handle the incoming requests. And we have uh, Zookeeper as a, uh, for distributed configuration management. And now what we do, so for every incoming query, uh, we replicate that query and we route it to versions A and B. So version A is just a specific solar query, you can say. Version B is maybe another solar query. And um, then, we deploy, of course, more than just two versions, A and B. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever, right? We have many versions that we deploy, and we flexibly switch between them using Zoo Zookeeper, right? So we make, we're doing this to um, just have more flexibility, flexibility. We don't need to actually, you know, we are not kind of tied down or bound to our actual um, uh, production update cycle. Result mixing of A and B is then implemented in a processing layer above solar. So there are a couple of, of caveats, a couple of things you should be aware of if you implement this. I'm going to detail three caveats about this method. So don't confuse users with changing results, right? You want to give um, a, a stable, consistent experience to users. And you have a random generator in that um, process when you generate the synthesized list, right? So what you do is you use, for example, the user ID to seed the random generators and uh, make that uh, stable, a stable experience. Another thing is, I mean, now, since we are really relying on, on click data, on the, actual, on the actions that actual users perform, which is great, Right? You want users to help you optimize your product. Well, you have, to, you have to make sure that you can trust those clicks, right? So, I mean, you, you have to, you're now sensitive to log contamination, like uh, unidentified QA requests internally, or um, spam, you know, if, if anyone would be interested in attacking that. So, one, one thing to rule out, um, um, problems with, 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 with logs or um, with such artifacts is to look at, um, you know, a cumulative plot um, of users and clicks, right? And if you have a plot like this, indicates this is healthy, right? It says that, you know, a larger fraction, 70% of users accounts for, you know, 80, 90% of the traffic. If you had something like a small, very small percentage of users, generating a lot of traffic, maybe that could be, could make you suspicious. Here's the last warning. Well, different versions might actually exhibit different coverage. What I mean by coverage is non-empty responses in, per in percent. Think about it, you know, the nearby places feature is trying to recommend you places. Well, if you look at the example of, um, you know, here we have an example. Uh, eat and drink, we tested many things. One of the things we tested was eat and drink versus a combination of eat and drink and going out. And um, here the statistical significance is not, is not uh, significant, but it just happens so that the combination of the two, eat and drink plus going out, you know, gives you better coverage. It just happens so that you can give users more often an answer and don't disappoint them with we don't know this area or we, you know, we don't know recommended places in this area or something like this. So here the higher coverage decides in case there is no statistical significance. So eat and drink versus hotels. This was the initial, this is almost concluding my talk, this is the initial um, case study that we were curious about. Um, just 
wondering um, if you were spontaneously interacting with either eat and drink or hotels, who would prefer seeing hotels? Probably no one. Who would think they would rather interact spontaneously with restaurant listings? That's most people. That's why it's very interesting to see the results. It's, um, you see, it's already very close. Eat and drink is the red one, yes. Eat and drink is the winner. Um, but we were actually surprised how many people were interacting with hotels in this nearby uh, places feature. And a possible explanation is that actually, you know, users see Nokia Maps still today uh, primarily as a tool to, you know, for car and driving navigation. We have um, free navigation as a service worldwide, and this is kind of a key product proposition. And because of that, there seem to be users who use that list not to discover or, or to do spontaneous interactions on, on places they didn't know before, but they just use it to shortcut a search, something that they actually were aware of before. They just invoke the list and they select, um, you know, they select the hotel as a driving destination um, because they just need to pen the map wherever they already know that hotel is. They don't need to enter a search. If you have a touchscreen phone, maybe you, you want such features where uh, you don't need to type anything, but you conveniently select it from a list, even if you knew it before. So we, we think we see some of the predominant use case of the overall MAPS product reflected in these A-B testing statistics. Here's a summary. Then I think we have maybe time for three or four minutes for questions. So um, use A-B rank interleaving to optimize result relevance Rank interleaving is easy to implement, works. Uh, it's actually also very well established. I just heard Yahoo is using it for you know, search optimization. In a distributed search architecture, manage your B-test configurations conveniently using Zookeeper. Harness your Hadoop search analytics stack for A-B test evaluations. And another thing is you know, be ready for surprises. Don't make assumptions about your users beforehand. Rather you know, put it to the test, measure, and find out what works best. <coughs> Thanks a lot. If you want to learn more, you know, drop me an email. I think um, uh, I'm just the guy who volunteered to present this work at this conference. Most of the actual work has been done by uh, Steffen, Mark, Felix, Ross, and Peter. But I'm happy to take a few questions, and then we'll see you who is answering them. One, one question, um, what is the criteria do you use to generate those lists? What criteria do you use? For instance, like, uh, it just happens, the place happens to be nearby, uh, yes. or being a vegetarian, does it make sense to show me a steakhouse, yeah. something like that? So, so, I mean, here in this case study, um, um, we, we said, you know, best of, best of eat and drink versus best of hotels, right? So what is best of? In our case, it's a combination of we want to make it walking distance. We want to have some signals that tell us it's best off. Uh, a good signal would be you know, to look at ratings or um, other information, maybe activity that people have maybe you know, saved it um, or have interacted it with it a lot. So there are so many features that can, could go in, into there. A lot of the actual signals and the signal combination is, of course, what is also the secret sauce, right, of, of uh, um, what makes these products. So, but whatever you do, you can just put them to the test. We chose this case study because we expected very clear results, right? If you, if you had looked at the actual numbers, maybe you've seen that, you know, there were only a thousand action clicks needed or so to get a significant, statistically significant winner declared, right? Very few clicks. You could run that in an intranet. It's also great when you put this out, you know, when you put this out maybe first in, in beta labs, like uh, expose a new product increment only to a small fraction of users. This method will also help you get away and get statistical significance and get a winner. Find out what to use, right, for relevance. 
um, um, without requiring a lot of user traction. Yes? Um, what's the reason for tossing a coin all the time? Why not just once at the beginning? The choosing of AB. Yeah. Steffen, do you want to answer? Yeah, I mean, it, it needs to be perfectly fair. I mean, what, I mean if, you, if you toss a coin, then each of them, each of the version gets first. Uh, in with an equal chance. If you always take the version A first, then it's not, not good, yeah. fair. But I mean, the, so the example here was uh, in the presentation that you, you flip the coin for every position, essentially. Right? That, that's, what, that's what the picture was like. You didn't, pick, you didn't toss a coin and say, okay, which one is going to go first? And then you just go left, right, left, right. You toss the coin after for each position, and that's what I'm wondering about. Theoretic details that is mentioned in the paper by Thorsten Joachim, so you can look it up. I don't mm. know. Yeah, so, so that section is called team draft interleaving. And I mean, if you want to get rid of the position bias, I mean, this is theoretically the way to do it. Um, <clears throat> so you show the, the result of the A-B test. You take dimension, so like uh, I'm walking or... Uh, I was on my car, so you do analysis of the result per dimension. And I was wondering, how do you choose this dimension? Because at the end, you know, maybe it's a rainy day or it's a sunny day. You have mm -hmm. so many dimensions which are possible. Which one, you know, which one you, de how do you decide which dimension is the most important yeah. for the result? Okay. okay, so the question is, I mean, the um, results that we showed here in this slide, um, they show, you know, there we, we look at different actions that users do with the recommended places, but the context could, could change, right? And then, okay, so I mean, uh, first of all, we, we do the actions because, and not just list selection clicks, but the actions, because they are a stronger uh, signal for, for user interest and for user engagement. And then, um, you know, what you actually look at here, if you, we said, we declared this in the beginning, that we're going to look at the sum. If you look, for example, this example, Eden Ring would consistently win, except in this funny drive use case, right? The overall idea is, of course, in A-B testing is that you factor out most of the context. You're presenting these, um, you know, A-B tests to all of your users, and the A-B test is, is running for all of them, right? So you are, over time, um, becoming invariant to a lot of the variations, kind of they average out. So, I mean, you could do analysis here by action. So this is, you know, this is why this works. But I mean, you could do an analysis either on a, a specific action that you're interested in, or maybe on a sum of selection of actions as we have done it. Um, so you said that this interleaving is better than uh classical, mm -hmm. do you maybe have any sort of numbers that would tell us how much better that is? How? Yeah, yeah. so I mean, um, I, I recommend you have a look at the original paper. If you look at uh, Joachim's 2008, he published it as an, at an ACM conference. 2008, Joachim's ACM is going to give you the exact uh, paper title. And there, the domain was a little bit different, but in his domain, he did a quantitative comparison, but that, you know, the quantitative difference is probably only valid for that specific domain. You can look at that. I think one thing that would be interested, interesting for us to do would, you know, to do it ourselves in our environment and, and compare it to classical A-B testing. No, not for this particular case study. We have basically just built on this um, state-of-the-art published paper.